Hi, this is Lee. Today I'm going to do a continuation of my previous video where I was showing how to trick your Cricut to cut larger than what Cricut Print and Cut will allow. And um, if you haven't watched that video, I suggest watching that one first and then come to this one because I'm going to cover some of the same stuff, but um, I do it in more detail in the previous video. So um, in that video, I show how to put a solid color border around the image that you're going to cut. And people have been asking, how would I do a bleed? And you can do a bleed. Um, it's just, it's not as easy as doing a solid color. Now, you know, on Cricut, it'll just put the bleed in automatically. But if you're going to print a larger image, like for a shirt or whatever, you can't get the Cricut to cut that large. So you would have to, if you want to bleed, you have to add it in manually in Photoshop. But luckily, there's a pretty easy way to do that. Okay, so um, I'm using this picture, and I will put a link to it in the notes so that you can play with the same picture. This is a, a tardigrade, a little microscopic creature. I have a friend who loves them, and I made her a pair of socks with this tardigrade image on them. And so it, it just makes a good example of how to do this bleed. Now the first thing I'm going to do is put the registration marks in, which I showed you how to do in the previous video. So I'll just go through it kind of quickly as a, um, as a reminder. So you'll want to click on the rectangular marquee selection tool. And then we'll want it styled to be fixed size. And you'll want to put in a measurement there that makes sense. In this case, 0.4 inches is fine. It sort of depends on how large your image is. And then I'll just click to make that selection, and you can see it there. What I want to do is fill the selection with a dark color, and in this case I will choose black. So you can just click on this little color tool down here and choose your color. Now I don't want that registration mark to be on the same layer as my image, so I'm going to create a new layer. The keyboard shortcut for that is Control shift n and I will go ahead and name that layer. Normally when I'm doing stuff on my own, I don't do this, and then I always wish I had. So I will call this registration. All right, then I will click the paint bucket tool and fill that square with black. I'm going to go back on the marquee tool and click inside that marquee selection to deselect it. And then I will use the move tool, the very top tool there, to select just that black box and hover over it till I get a move arrow and I will move it up into the top left hand corner. Then I just want to do the same thing to all the other corners and a quick and easy way to copy a layer is to hold down Control Alt until you see those two little double arrows there and then you can click and drag to copy that layer and I will drag that one over into the top right corner. Then what I'll do is I'll hold down Shift and for some reason I've got, what do I have? Oh, that's a bad one, so I'll just delete that layer. Yes. I will hold down Shift and select both of these and do Control E, Control E to join those together into the same layer. That's not right. Let me undo that. I need to move some of these guys around. move them back exactly into the corners. Now I'll select both and do Control E. And then I'll just do that Control Alt till I get the double arrows and drag down and put those two registration marks in the bottom corners. And then again, hold down Shift to select both of those and Control E to merge them into one layer. And now all of those are in the same layer. They move together. The tardigrade is in his own layer, so you can move him separately. All right, now I just want to select the tardigrade, so I'll hold down Control and click on his image here, and that selects just the tardigrade, just my subject, as long as it's got a transparent background. And I want to save this selection so that we can use it later, later in the video. So I will right-click and then scroll down to Save Selection. I will give it a name. I'll name it... Um, tardigrade. All right. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to expand this selection so that I can put a shadow layer behind him, just the same as I did in the other video. So I'll just go to select, 
modify, expand. And you will have to play with the amount to expand it by. In this case, I know that 30 pixels works well. All right, so if I zoom in, you can see now it has expanded that selection to 30 pixels outside of my tardigrade. I want to make a shadow layer behind him. And um, in the previous video, we did that as a white shadow layer. But in this case, I'm going to do it as a bright color, which I don't have anywhere in this image because I want to be able to select just that color without picking up anything else. So I'm going to use pink. Before I do that, I need to create a new layer. So Control Shift N, and I will call this Shadow. And now I will use the paint bucket, make sure I've got my bright color selected, paint bucket, and fill that selection. I'll then take that layer and drag it down behind the tardigrade. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to select only this pink part, not the entire pink. Um, not the entire pink object, just the pink part that's showing in between my uh, subject and the background. So I'll go to the magic wand tool and uh, tolerance, it won't matter too much at this point. Pick something in the 15 to 30 range. But you do want to make sure that sample all layers is selected. If you don't say sample all layers and you click on the peak, it selects the entire pink object. But if I say sample all layers, it's going to include the tardigrade image in that, and it will just select that little outside. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to expand that just a little bit so that it overlaps the, um, the subject a little bit. Now, uh, Inkscape, I mean not Inkscape, Photoshop has a modify border. But in that case, it, it doesn't give you enough flexibility to make the border um, smaller on one side than the other. And we do need a, um, a good amount of space over here, but we don't want it to overlap the image by, by the same amount. So in this case, I will just say Select, Modify, Expand. And I'll just expand that by a small number of pixels so that it barely overlaps. So you can see it overlaps him just a little bit right there. Okay, now is the fun part. Uh, I've lost my selection. There it is. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that the tardigrade layer is the one that's selected. And then we go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. That opens up this new page and this message pops up, use the sampling brush tool to add the sampling area in order to fill the selected region. So the selected region is what we have selected and the layer we have selected is the image layer. So it's going to sample from our image and fill this area that we have selected. So we tell that okay and then we wanna make sure we're on the brush. You can change the size. You want to make sure this is set to plus. That means you're adding. Um, minus would basically turn the paintbrush into an eraser and you'd be taking away what you want to sample. So brush plus and now we'll just come up here and we will highlight around the edges of the tardigrade or your subject if you haven't done something so horrible as a tardigrade. And we're just selecting the outside pixels to tell Photoshop to use those to make up what's going to go in these out here in the selection. And you can see a preview of what it's done here and it looks pretty good. You can see it's filled in with uh, pixels in the, um, the adjacent areas. And if it doesn't look good, you can undo it and try again or you can cancel and go back and fix your selection or whatever. But in this case, that looks pretty good. So I'll say OK. All right, so now this would be your print file. So um, you would just print this out and now we need to uh, make a cut file to upload to Cricut so it knows what to cut. So in the previous video, I would use the shadow layer as the cut, but in that case it, it overlaps and it would cut on the outside of what we added as a bleed and that's not what we want. We want it to just cut the original outline of the tardigrade. So that's where our save selection comes in handy. 
I'll just make sure the marquee tool is selected. Right click on this empty space and say load selection. And then I need to pick which one, which is tardigrade. Okay, so now it's loaded that previous selection that I saved. And now I just want to delete any of the pink part that is now um, outside of that selection. So I'll invert the selection, Control Shift I. Now it's selected everything that was outside of that. And I'll just say delete while I'm on the pink layer. And now we've got our cut file. If I just get rid of this, if I turn off the visibility on the tardigrade layer, I would save this as a PNG file, upload that to Cricut, and that would be my cut file. And then turn off the pink layer and print this as your print file. And then you should be able to, um, to import this at the correct size into Design Space. You would make it so Control Alt I opens up the image dimensions. So this image is 6.52 by 8.647. So you would upload this into Cricut, change it to exactly that size, and that would give you your cut file. All right, so that is how you do that. And that um, um, content aware fill makes it really easy to just fill in those pixels with something that matches. And it'll be definitely close enough when you print this out that if your cut is off by a couple of millimeters, it, you won't really be able to tell. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.